Oh, uh huh. Yeah. So I guess I'm still finding my process. Um, yeah. And this master class uh-huh. program is giving me so many ideas and finding my personal voice is my goal. So yeah. I'm yeah. on my way. Yeah. Jennifer, I have a question for you. Um, yeah, I, I love what you're doing there. It's awesome. And, and I'm really glad that the master classes are helping. But my question for you is um, I'm also working with India Inc. and I've tried so many different brands. And they all say like waterproof. But what I found is that even after they're dry, if I try to go over with say polymer medium or acrylic, they run. Have you found one that's truly waterproof? No. And it's interesting because in the last um, exercise that I was working on, or maybe two exercises ago with the ink, I started with the Secura ink and I realized that that ink was not waterproof. And then in your notes, um, you had said waterproof ink, and I and I think you were using Speedball. Yes. And I have this big bottle of Speedball, and I checked it, and it says waterproof, and it's not so waterproof. <laughs> so that's, Yeah, that's mine too, and I, I'm so frustrated. And so uh, yesterday what I did was, um, and I actually recorded this, but uh, depending on what you do with it, and we all know that, like, these initial marks, uh, we're sometimes using water-soluble things and mark-making tools and inks that don't, they're not waterproof like they say they will be. So what I did yesterday, because on my panels, I used a lot, a lot of ink, and because I wanted the thicker, bolder, gestural lines, and I noticed that they were going to run. So I took, I'm going to transition into cold wax and oil probably in the second session today, And what I did then was kind of something I've demonstrated before where I put uh, clear clear gesso onto wax paper and I just blotted the entire area. Yeah. That's a good idea. And that has locked it in um, panels. So um, So that's a fantastic idea because I don't like having to use the spray fixative for anything because it's so toxic and it's freezing cold here. I don't want to go outside. It'll take too long to dry. Right. And so, yeah, if that, and would that work for like the art graph marks and, um, and other dry media? Yeah. So like this, yeah. this is just jelly tissue, but you know, let's pretend that this is wax paper and I do have a video that's going to um, probably be, you know, you'll see it later, but anyways, you coat this evenly with, um, either polymer medium thin or clear gesso so if you're going to transition into another medium, which is what I'm going to do. So in my case, I put clear gesso and I just and made sure it's thin and even. And then systematically, I went over this entire thing and I just went like this. Okay. okay. Now you can see that if I hit this with water, this is water. And let me hope that my clear gesso is was thick enough. So I only did one layer, one blotch, right? Okay. Um, but I'll just try it. And uh, this is this is all ink. And it's not, you know. It's not running. That's amazing. That's such yeah. an amazing tip. Thank you. Well, yeah, because it's like I know I know that I've heard the question before about what it really matters, and you don't want your marks to run. Um, uh, this and I've I've done videos like this before on say smaller panels with acrylic that remain acrylic, and you've got these delicate aquarellable uh, pencils that they're definitely going to run. And people have been like, "Well, how do you fix it?" And like you, I don't like fixatives <laughs> because uh, you have to have such a high amount of ventilation. You should be doing it outside in the first place. But when you get to really big on panels, it's like, you know, it's hard to spray. So I found this to be, uh, you can use polymer medium, gel medium, acrylic gesso. Um, and these all, these all have water in them. So the reason to block them then is to minimize. And you don't, like when you block, you don't want to move the sheet because that sheet might move. Right. Yeah. And then just let it dry. And, and the beauty of any of these polymer mediums is they dry completely invisible. And like when I first did it yesterday, it was kind of milky. And I thought, oh no, the clear gesso has these particulates in it. And but actually, it is completely dry today and see through. So like I, I can't is, see. Oh, thank you so much for sharing that with us because. <laughs> when I was doing this I'm like well I know when I add my gel medium it's going to smear everything and it'll just make a different look but if you don't want that and you want those lines to stay very you know concise and and you like them the way that they that they are then yeah you don't want them moving around so and and are you on panel or paper what are you working on no that's actually a can a a gallery wrapped canvas I don't have any panels left I need to order some um so yeah that's framed canvas you should be great to go. Hey, Pam. Yeah. 
A couple people have mentioned uh, PBO brand is really waterproof. Joe Mepham, Mepham said that, and Deborah Pugh said FW Acrylic slash India Ink. Okay, FW. What's FW? Does that stand for something? I don't know. Deborah, you want to unmute? What's FW? Yeah, that's, that's um, it's the Dana Roney. Okay. FW Inks. Oh, thank you. And PBO, is that P-E-B-E-O? Thank you, guys. Hey, guys. Um, Pam, Blick, Black Cat, Waterproof India Ink. Blick? Oh, I'm holding it up. Oh, Blick. I bought it. See, I've got it, but I haven't opened it yet. So um, I bought it because I wanted to try to see if it was waterproof, but I haven't gotten to it yet. So really, it's waterproof? Yeah. Yeah, it, I, have, it, I have the same one. Yeah. Ah. Who said mm -hmm. they had the same one? Patty. Okay, Patty, and you guys have both tested it out when it's dry and uh, I'm pretty sure. I'm yeah. pretty sure. Yeah. You know, Jack, it says don't don't put it into a um fountain pen because it will clog it all up. Okay. So you can't you can't then use right. water to clean it out. Yeah. I find this, yeah, same thing. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you guys. What a great, you know, I was hoping somebody would have an answer because mm -hmm. what the heck? They say it's waterproof and then it's not. <laughs> I don't have Blick here in Canada. That's the only problem. I guess I could order it to duty, but. This is great getting to ask questions and get info yeah. from each other like this, isn't it? Yeah. Thank you. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> does anyone need ideas or does anyone want to share something awesome you're doing? Otherwise, we'll just start our next 20 minute session. I am about to burn a stencil. So I print it out <laughs> first on the uh, inkjet or whatever. And then you get a piece of clear acrylic and take a wood burner. So I'll be burning this stencil. Wow. When you're doing the clear gesso or the medium to, to oh. fix, yes. do you recommend wax paper over um, parchment paper for that? Great question. Um, so yeah, I actually kind of thought about all the things that I, I felt I could use. I, when I first started that process, I started with like the shiny side of free, uh, freezer paper but you can't see through it. And what I noticed is that, well, what if your, whatever you're putting on there, like polymer medium or gesso is uneven. So then I switched over to something you can see through. Tracing paper, um, mm -hmm. wax paper, parchment paper, so that you can kind of see, you know, with as, as you're rubbing just with your hand, you don't need to be anything fancy, no gray or nothing. A gentle touch, actually, because you don't want to disturb these um, very delicate areas. So in answer, yeah, I think parchment paper is a wonderful thing. And the key here is anything smooth, even, even newsprint would work. You just don't want to use like one of those paper towels that has like a little repeating pattern because actually that's going to transfer to your piece. So just make sure it's super smooth. That's all you have to think about anything, even palette paper. Okay. And then after you do that, do you use a new sheet for each area or do you just keep using the same one? Great question too. I noticed yesterday that after I put what I thought was a thin layer, I started to blot the first uh, rectangle. I peeled it off and, and said to myself, wow, there's a lot left on here. So then I did it again and I did it again. So I got like three passes with one sheet. Then I, I put more of the medium on there again and I started over on another part of the painting did three more passes and I must have gotten like nine applications from one sheet of wax paper so you can use it again and again you can kind of feel or whatever you're using but parchment paper is stronger than wax paper so it just depends on the paper you can kind of feel when it's getting a little wimpy and loose and it might tear okay. But even if that happens, you know, okay, switch to another paper. But yeah, definitely you can reuse it again and again until you feel like there's no more medium being transferred. Okay, super. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Hey, Pam. Um, yeah, yeah. Eleanor had a question that kind of goes with this, so I wanted to go ahead and ask it. Sure. Uh, she asked, can you seal in oil pastels or oil sticks on acrylic with the polymer medium or clear gesso? Yes, I have done that. So if, if it's um, if you're going to stay with acrylic for your entire all the layers of your painting, you're staying with like a polymer based medium. Um, now, the only reason to use an acrylic clear gesso, which is after all, it's gesso. So if, if you've never used it before, what you need to know about it is that while it does dry clear, it is a it feels and I would just 
for those of you who've just gone through physical texture, it feels like sandpaper. So it, it's intended to be painted over, and I use that on my acrylic. If I'm going to move into cold wax and oil, which is what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to work on that crazy line painting with cold wax and oil. That's why I put the clear gesso on yesterday. So um, you can uh, basically use any polymer medium, and there's no real need to use the clear gesso unless you're, you're switching mediums. Does that help? So you can go ahead and use gesso or polymer on top of the oil pastel and oil sticks if you're yes, staying but, with acrylic. Yeah, I mean, when you say, pa okay, pastels, um, my Pentel or Craypods, they, they're oil pastel, but they're, they dry really quickly. And I've, I've definitely put polymer medium over those little Craypods deals. Now that's okay. not the same as an oil stick, like RNF ah. pigment stick, just to make it clear. Because ah, you yeah. can, you know, you can use RNF pigment sticks, which are full-blown oil. They're mostly oil on top of acrylic. But if you do that, that's your final, you know, you're, you're committing to, to moving into oil now. You can never put acrylic over that again. So okay. um, let's just talk about cray pods and um, like Pentel oil pastels. But, you know, they're the ones that are more for drawing and they feel right. really dry. Okay. okay. Well, Carmen just asked about collaging with vellum, and I thought that you could, couldn't you? Um, I, I mean, vellum is kind of tricky. If you can get it to stay, um, you know, it's, vellum is, is a little tricky. Ah. Because it, it doesn't have any absorbency. It's, um, it's not like a paper that can absorb anything. So I kind of look at it, it's almost like a... I don't want to say plastic, but it's kind of resistant to absorbing anything. But I just say try it. Yeah. So I've worked with a lot of vellum, and vellum doesn't take water easily at all. Right. So I would be very careful. You know, it's used for mo mostly plans and architectural drawings, and it it um it just doesn't take water yes. well at all. Yeah, I, I agree, Leslie. And if, if you do hit it with water, depending on how thick your vellum is, it starts to buckle. And, and yeah, that, yeah. That's not something you can, you know, like I've talked about how you straighten watercolor paper and mixed media. Yeah, paper. you can't do that. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of tough stuff. I'm working on the physical um, texture um, project. And uh, I'm wondering, if things are raised higher, like for instance, I have some bubble wrap and I cover that with a lot of gesso, but it's still quite raised from the rest. Does that still work or not? You know, there's really, uh, for, for the texture sheet you're working on right now, right. you're gonna have highs and lows. Um, the whole point of it is that whatever you do, you get a really, you know that this is physical texture. Now, if you're using bubble wrap, most likely you've got a section of bubble wrap and you've got a section of perhaps wallpaper paper and all these different kinds of texture. And in the end, like let's say the bubble wrap is like what you love it, okay? In that case, uh, later on, when we get to composition, you might want to feature that because you really love it. And you know, let's say you cut out a little square of the bubble wrap and it, yes, it is raised, but you seal the edges so that it, it, you know, so that it can work. You can integrate it into a painting. Yes. You know, if you think about all the different types of paintings out there by artists who have, say, glued a shoe onto their painting, or I have a, a professor who had a deer head sticking out of her painting, or you know, it again, that's that the whole point of this is that there is no limit, there's no right or wrong, anything. Um, and you don't have to, you know, what you put on your texture mat does not have to be something you love. We we actually want a contrast of things that we're more inclined to like versus things we're not as inclined to like because that's all very useful information. So I would just say, sure, I, I can't really think of anything that you couldn't put on your texture mat. It's just that if you if you were to glue a huge 3D object to it, you know, likely you if you did that and you love that, that means a very strong indication that you 
might want to really explore some crazy 3D elements in a 2D surface. So I, I'd say that if that's an inclination, you're like, well, I really like bubble wrap. What if I try something even crazier than bubble wrap, something even more high relief? Um, if that, you know, again, this is where your sensitivity to as you're as you're watching as you go and you're you're constantly asking yourself a question, do I like it or not? And usually it's a yes or no answer. So if you love the bubble wrap, then I would actually go in the the area of like, well, what's even more crazy than bubble wrap? But if you're not liking it, then I would again go for as much variety as you can get. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> Okay. Just keep experimenting is what it is. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I've seen some yeah. awesome things in the group, so. I just love all these discoveries we're making today.